Hi, I'm Wesley. Welcome to the 22 Zines YouTube channel. I created this channel because there is just, frankly, not enough cool zine shit on YouTube, so I'm here to fill that void. Uh, basically, I'm going to be talking about um, zines. I, uh, I'm going to be doing stuff about making zines, reading zines, reviewing zines, collecting zines, sharing, trading, collections, highlights, just any and everything that has to do with zines. Um, I'll also probably do some tarot and astrology content just because, yeah, I'm one of those people too. <laughs> um, but today I wanted to just get started by talking a little bit about how I got into zines and some of the most influential, influential uh, zine just content and zines that really got me involved in it and got me hooked. Uh, yeah. So, this all starts when I was in middle school, of course, because <laughs> fucking everything starts when you're in middle school, right? I, in uh, 7th, 8th, and ninth grade, I went to a pretty non-traditional uh, public school where it was sort of known as the hippie school, and it was known as the school where you went to if you couldn't really hack real school. Um, and I... Uh, the way that they had their classes set up is that you would take an English class, you'd take a math class, you'd take whatever, but they would, um, it would be almost more like college classes in the sense that it would be about a very specific topic, and that's sort of how they introduced a lot of the fundamental concepts. And so for science, they had, like, uh, a whale biology class, and it was all about whales. And, of course, that's, you know, in lieu of the normal seventh grade biology or whatever it was so it was really awesome and so for english they had a class on zines which was so fucking cool i took that class and um that's where i was introduced to what is still probably my favorite zine book it's called what you mean what's a zine and uh as you can see here my copy was uh borrowed <laughs> from the school library they never asked it for it back, so now it's just mine. Um, <laughs> it's it's been a long time. I I, I don't know. I'm probably gonna go back there, and <laughs> you know, they're gonna track me down some way. They're gonna send me some fine for like you know the twelve ninety nine that this book was worth plus fifty years in uh <laughs> like back fines. Uh, but anyway, um. This book is really something. It it was shocking to me because it was the first book that I had ever seen. And, like, ugh, I'm such a fucking nerd that this is the first book that I'd ever seen that looked like this. But basically, here's some pictures of the interior. This is awkward to do. Um, and it was very, um, very much like reading a comic or reading a zine. Um, here, here's like a cool comic page that they have about the process of making zines. And it was really, oh man, this fucking page. You know, like, it was really exciting and it really just captured, I think, the whole energy and experience of what making zines is about. And so that's what I really just, what really caught my attention about this book was that you could be creative outside of a fine arts context. And I'd always been one of those creative kids. I was constantly drawing, constantly writing, whatever. But this really just opened things up. And honestly, it opened things up to a point that I wasn't ready for yet, where a lot of the uh, other classmates, they were doing like these super badass, intense diary zines or slam poetry um zines I guess it's not slam poetry if it's written but whatever they're doing like these these really cool zines and I just wasn't ready for that because I had I was in a family situation that was really shitty and abusive and unsafe and to have any sort of <laughs> rebellious self-expression would you know I just wasn't ready to handle that at all like I wasn't even remotely goth as a teenager I was always goth adjacent like all my friends were goths I wanted to be goth but it just was like no not gonna happen um anyway you don't have to be goth to make zines but it helps <laughs> um anyway so uh 
what I did do was with my friends, we made a newspaper, which was in hindsight, it was basically a zine, uh, for the school because we, we weren't writing about like the classic school news sort of thing. We just did a lot of, um, fiction and comics and, um, drawings and horoscopes and all, all this really cool stuff that, you know, by any standard, it was a zine. And people fucking hated us for it. Like, <laughs> like we got so many messages that were like, we're really sick if you leave in your newspaper ever. But basically, we had this deal with our English teacher to uh, go and make a bunch of these copies. And so once a month, we'd go and we'd make this huge big run of the, of the newspaper uh, copies. And we'd leave like a dozen in every classroom. And oh my god, people were so fucking annoyed by us. But it was really amazing. <laughs> so that's probably like the most zine-like thing that I ever actually did as a kid. But, um, and then in high school, when I went to a different school, it all was on this kind of hiatus. I, you know, I was having some family shit and it just, you know, it just wasn't going to happen there. And so it wasn't until I was in college that I really rediscovered zines. And, um, so I'm, I'm living in Berkeley, right? And I... There was a local comic store. I wasn't all that into comics. Like, really, the only comic I was ever interested in was Tank Girl. And I still fucking love Tank Girl. And so, of course, like, that's one of these things that was really influential. Because it's like, this isn't a traditional uh, superhero comic. You know, this looks like this. This is... This is not, like... Let's see if I can find a decent picture. But it's like, you know, you're not gonna find that in most regular superhero comics and it just blew my fucking mind completely obsessed with with tank girl and sub girl and you know anyway so um one thing that they did have is they did have some zines they were mostly like mini comics at this comic store so i picked one up and it was the great murano by uh let's see wilder and this was completely amazing because it really made me feel like I could make a comic. Anybody could make a comic. It doesn't have to be super serious. It doesn't have to be especially good. I mean, look at, look at this. It is so raw. It feels like these old, um, sort of 1980s D and D, um, adventure monster manuals kind of thing before it got all slick and highly produced you know not that slick and highly produced is necessarily a bad thing but it's definitely a different it's a different thing altogether so the thing about the great murano is it just really it really opened the doors and it is a self-published you know zine basically by all accounts and that's what kind of opened the door for me like it just it just reminded me what I really love about small press and what I really love about being able to make your own thing and um so that's when I sort of started getting into doing more mini comics and that slowly developed into web comics and that sort of thing but you know Great Murano was definitely very influential in my uh my becoming a zinester is this super pretentious to even be talking about this? Probably, but fuck, I don't care. Um, the other, the next thing was, um, just like all the fucking Republicans are super afraid of, is I went off to college and I got super radicalized um, when I took an intro to philosophy class. Philosophy ended up being my major, but um, I got handed this pamphlet by, very um, secretly, I guess, by my fucking uh by my uh intro to philosophy professor and he was so weird but he basically handed me this and a couple other pamphlets I think that I have since rehomed that was basically about um socialism and about radicalization and about all this stuff and um honestly it probably wouldn't have had that much of an effect on me if he wasn't so like weird about it <laughs> so I was just like oh man what what the hell is he talking about and I read this stuff and to be honest I was super uncomfortable with it at first um but 
anyway, what what really got me about about this and about these sort of pamphlets was that it felt like it was really doing something. It was really saying something and it was it was being able to put something out there that wasn't um it didn't exist already and it wasn't on the mainstream media, obviously. And he's like I think the reason he was so nervous is because I guess as a professor you can kind of get in trouble for um trying to be political in front of your students whatever and this was a community college so it might have been sort of you know that might have been part of it I don't know but it was like the point is just having any of these sort of little zines that were actually about radicalizing and it was more than just entertainment I guess that's the thing because as much I love mini comics I love zines that are purely for entertainment this was like this was like the heart of zines of really of of putting something out there that could never be put out there otherwise does that make sense i mean i don't know it just it was like another really important milestone i guess in my zine journey and so of course this has a special place in my heart even though like i have a lot better zines now i've got better zines on socialism a lot more educated now but you know and i probably wouldn't like recommend this one for new socialists or anyone who was just kind of curious about reading about it but um you know it was really important to me and um one of the other ones that one of the other zines that really made a difference for me it was more of a more of a newspaper i guess whatever you want to call it but you've probably seen this before it's called slingshot because I was in Berkeley and that's where this is centered. It's an East Bay publication and it's totally free and they just, you know, have it out and about. Like there was this house that I used to walk by on my way to school and this is, they would just fill a box with these. And so I started taking them and reading them. This is not the original one that I have. I have like some of the really early ones. I mean, they're not that early in the context of the publication, but like ones from 2016 from when I really started reading zines. Um, uh, this, I, I have no fucking idea where those are. They're probably just in some box somewhere. So this is sort of a newer edition, but this one just reminded me so much of the old newspaper that I did with my friends in that it was, it was talking about just whatever we wanted to talk about. And it was, you know, putting new things out there. I'm just going to pull some things out to get more images. Like, it's what we thought was news. And it's what we wanted to be news. And it's like really, Im and it was important stuff that just, you know, was being put out there for free. And that's what, that's another thing that I loved it is that free zines or just cheap zines. It's just this, this whole idea of making information accessible. I'm definitely going to be talking about that. Cause that's actually what I'm doing now is I'm a librarian or not exactly. I mean, I'm in library school and that is something that's really important to me is just accessibility of information and, um, and economic accessibility of information. So anyway, um, so there you get stuff like, getting to the root of toxic masculinity and you get, um, you know, getting an education in empathy. And this just, it all felt so meaningful and it was so frank. It was so blunt. It was so like, this is what we want to say and we can say it exactly how we want to say. And we don't have to bend to any editors. I mean, that's not exactly true, but you know, we don't have to bend to the publication industry and we can just fucking make it whatever we want. Anyway, so so Slingshot is definitely really important to me, and um, it'll always have a special place in my heart, and I'll be trying to pick it up. Even, I'm, I'm in Boston now, but, you know, I'm still going to be trying to pick it up. And then the last thing that was really meaningful, like the last zine that really had a big impact um, on my life, especially before I was really involved in the zine scene or whatever you'd want to call it. Um, it's a pretty popular one. It's called Fiddler's Green and Fiddler's Green is a pagan magic, um, zine. 
it I don't even know what it, what you'd call it beyond that. It has a lot of um just a lot of esoteric thoughts and um you know, it has things like in the footsteps of the ancestors is like a little article that was written about um just the ex just you know this sort of spiritual experience i guess that you can get by um connecting with ancestors or you know i don't know not everything in this speaks to me but a lot of it does and this one specifically this article in this zine called our bogies our shelves <laughs> this is so cool and it was really just it was talking about um how books can really impact your life and how your library is sort of a growing and ever-changing and ever-expanding um, representation of yourself and, and your childhood and just the books that really stay with you and what you choose to, um, to keep and carry with you has a really great effect on, on you and, and it says a lot about you and it just... You know, I mean, it makes me kind of emotional even now, just kind of thinking about it, um, how important it is and how important it is to me. So anyway, like what was especially nice about Fiddler's Green is I feel like it was supportive for me at a time that I really needed support because this is right after my dad died and I loved my dad so much and, um... I just felt really lost without him. And so that's really when I started looking into um, paganism and magic. And I admit that it was out of sort of a, a desperate attempt, this desperation to want to connect with my dad because I had never believed in heaven. And I still don't really believe in heaven. And I was just looking for something that I could sort of latch to as this, as being true so that I could have some sort of comfort or or connection with my dad and you know I wouldn't consider myself a pagan now and I wouldn't consider myself a witch now and I don't know that I ever did but just the fact that um this it this this zine really did get me and this zine just spoke to me in a way that was so important and so needed at the time that I don't think anything else could have and I think that's kind of the power of zines is because when you're, when you're sharing things from the heart and when you're sharing things, um, without so much concern about, about marketability and consumerism and all this stuff, then, um, it all, it almost allows you to connect with it more. And, you know, I'm sorry if I'm getting super pretentious and whatever, but the point is this was a really important zine to me because it spoke to me in a way that no other zine had and it spoke to me in a way that no other writing ever had um so since then my my collection has expanded greatly but i would definitely say that these are the zines that kind of made me who i am today as a person and as an artist and as a zine maker um so you know i will I will always treasure these zines and I think that zines um really are a treasure and it's sort of magical in the way that they can just speak to you right in in the moment and say exactly what you need to hear. Yeah. So anyway, I will probably be getting more in depth on zines when I do maybe read alouds or reviews or uh just showing off my collection a little bit more but I felt like this was a nice way to start off was just by sharing a few milestone zines in my life uh so thanks I'll be uploading videos fucking whenever because I don't know <laughs> and I will uh see you around happy zinin